How you guys doing? My name is Tom Alabrando. I'm with uh, IWI US. I'm the uh, National Law Enforcement Sales Manager. And we have some uh, newer products that have come out this year. I'll go down the line so you can kind of see them. But uh, we'll talk first about the Tavor 12. This is the Tavor Shotgun TS-12. It is a gas-operated uh, system. Uh, it actually has uh, a choke in the front. The thread is designed for a Benelli or Beretta choke tube. So if you want to take the, change the choke out, you can do that at a user level. M-lock rails on the side for accessories. These three tubes that you see underneath can hold up to five rounds each of two and three quarter inch. Five rounds each of two and three quarter inch. For a total of 15 rounds in the magazine plus one in the chamber, it gives you 16 rounds on the shotgun total. Okay. The... Uh, bolt release let me drop the bolt release here the cool thing about the weapon system is when you rotate the tubes okay when you rotate the tubes and the weapon actually runs empty what it will do is automatically load the next round onto the carrier and load it for you so you when you rotate the tube it'll dump it in uh, you don't have to do anything else mechanically to make it function at that point it's just ready to go again um, the safety is reversible the charging handle is reversible. The ejection is reversible at a user level. Don't need to take it to an armor. You can do it. Uh, you need one punch to knock the uh, bolt or the, uh, excuse me, the extractor out and then bring the extractor over to the opposite side and then reverse the ejection of it. So it uh, can be loaded from either the right ejection port or the left ejection port. Again, depending on where you're drawing ammunition from, if I start loading on left, and I need to do something, go over the top and load the right, I can actually do that. That's not a problem. So uh, MSRP on the shotgun is going to be about $13.99. We're looking at uh, first quarter release. A um, couple other small facts about it. Overall length of it is a little over 28 inches. It weighs 8 pounds. So as big as it looks, it's actually not that big. It balances out pretty nicely, too. All the weights in the back when you load the tubes up, it kind of balances right over your pistol grip, right over your hand. So it makes it a little bit nicer to shoot, which you guys found out when you shot it, because I think I saw you over there. Um, next one is, this is the Tavor 7. The Tavor 7 is a 308 bullpup. Now, some of the things, it looks like a SAR. It seems like a SAR. It has the profile of a SAR, but it's not a SAR. So it's a short stroke gas piston. That's something that was different from everything we else we did with the X95 or the Galil. Those are all long stroke. This is short stroke. The thing you noticed immediately is we got a notch cut into it. So you can either use the bolt catch to lock the bolt to the rear like you normally would, or you could pull back and lift up kind of like an HK. That's your choice. This is reversible. So at a user level, Lock the bolt to the rear. I can actually switch this through the body of the gun without removing. All I have to remove is the actual handle itself, but I push the insert over, and I can change it over to the other side. Just like the ejection port, I can actually change the ejection port opening by grabbing the brass deflector and reversing it. To change the ejection of it, you actually have, all you have to do is pull the bolt out, rotate the bolt so the extractor's facing the proper direction, put the cam pin back in, and you reverse the, uh, the ejection of the gun. So it takes about two minutes to convert this from right to left use for anybody, anywhere in the field. So it's got a four position gas regulator on top here. R-A-S-O, uh, regular, adverse, suppressed, and off. You can turn it off. That's for the guys that have subsonic rounds and they don't want the bolt to cycle. So that'll kill the gas in the gun. You still have Picatinny rails underneath. That never went away. M lock on the sides and obviously a pick rail that runs down the top. Now this is the overall length is roughly only half an inch longer than a regular X95, a standard X95. So here's a standard X right here. That's that. Three quarters, half inch difference between 556 and 308. It is one pound heavier. It is about one pound heavier. It's a 308, you have to beef it up. There's no way around that. You're going to have to do that. But uh, it's a great weapon. It's uh, definitely innovative. It uses SR25 pattern magazines, too. Instead of using anything that would be proprietary, it's all SR25. This little guy is going to be available for the civilian market. This is a, similar to the IDF model, 
X95 Micro. Uh, obviously, it's not full auto. The civilian version will not be full auto. Clearly, it's for law enforcement only. Um, but we're going to offer it as a package. It's going to cost the same price as an X95. And some of the differences between the older X9 or the X95 in the U.S. It's not older. It's the same pattern. And this one is the rubber butt pad went away. It's a plastic butt pad. Clearly, the forend is shorter and the barrel is 13 inches. Overall length on this weapon system is 22.8 inches. A little bit lighter, a little bit uh, more compact. Has all the same features as the X95. Initially, we're going to offer it as a full rifle, but later on, we're going to offer it as a kit. So it'll come with a barrel bolt assembly, a short rail, and a forend. And you just switch it out, now you have SBR. Obviously, you have to do all your NFA paperwork to make that happen. Okay. So those are some of the, uh, the newer things that we have. We do have an SBR Galil, too. We are selling these right now. These are already out. This is the 7.6239. We have the 5.56 and the 308 short barreled rifle. These are already on the market for anybody who wants them. They're made. 922R compliant short barreled rifle. Good?